Hello, hello everyone, welcome to the most real game in town, House of Games. Today I'm joined by a man who does not identify himself as a video game slash entertainment medium, Mr. Otto! But if that was not enough, he ain't playing solo in this game we are currently living in. I'm here too. Enter the arena, Mr. Rune! But before you dear listeners slash viewers wonder too much about what I'm a babbling about, let us play start on this week's episode of House of Games. <laughs> Welcome everyone to House of Games and our newest episode. So this time is it's actually take two. We recorded and failed, but uh, don't uh, don't worry. We we are here again just for you, making sure that there is actually an episode every week. So uh, yeah, this time I thought we was we were gonna talk about the definition of a video game, what a game in itself is. So I have an idea for myself. Uh, Rune, do you do you have an idea or a guess or what's your definition of a game? Uh, no, and worth mentioning is that we are not recording the same episode that we did, the one that failed. This has happened in the past and then we just dropped it and moved on and we will probably revisit the one we recorded yesterday later on. Yeah. Uh, and then we went through our document and it was uh, we both sort of laughed a little bit about this uh, this note that one of us wrote uh, in episode 32, we had a guest who had made 200 games. Uh, <laughs> and then in the note, I, I maybe it was someone, one of us had written, if this person had done 200 games, what is a game? And then, for example, I have made four games and that took me, what, five, six, seven years. And how can a person make 200 games? Listen to that episode 32. Uh, I forget this gentleman's name on top of my head, but that was a fun episode. Nonetheless, uh, it was a fun thing to read in the notes, and we had written that, what is a game? So uh, we thought, well, let's make an episode about that. So, But as we just discussed before we started recording, I can't quite think of anything. I, I don't even know what we meant by that back when we wrote that note. So please, Odo, if you have any definition of what a game is or how we can sort of kick off this episode... Uh, the mic is yours. Sure, and I think a game to me, at least. Uh, so I think uh, it's uh, interesting because the the word has a different meaning in Swedish and uh, in English. So in English, it's the same word, but in Swedish, it's the the sort of game that is a card game or a video game or something is different from playing mm. uh, that kind of sort of game. Uh, so, going by the English definition, I guess, then I think anything that would be considered, I think, interactive in some way and probably that you can win or gain something uh, from it. Um, I was thinking first that maybe the definition is that you can lose it or something like that. But mm. thinking about that, have you played Garris mod? No. So it's sort of a sandbox game for the Half-Life game games. So what it is is that you basically it's all almost like a level editor for Half-Life. So you can just uh, you start on uh, just pick a map and then it's just completely empty and then you can just spawn in assets and do what you want with them and you know do all all kinds of things like level editing and and stuff like that and that's the whole like game but i was thinking if that sort of doesn't have a challenge then is it not a game mm. but i guess then it has also multiplayer features so i guess then at least the multiplayer section would be considered a game because you know you control it <laughs> on servers and stuff and you can make that a sort of a game or you mm. could uh, sort of challenge yourself to build something or yeah um but i guess so just i think maybe the the interactive part and in that you can interact with others makes it a game um and i think the thing that i'm if anything would be considered not a game then i would 
say, for example, walking simulators feels to me not like a game, but rather like a museum almost. Mm. Like, you don't... If it were a movie instead, or just recorded gameplay, nothing would change. Maybe, I guess, you could say if there is some puzzle or something, then... Like it would be with Mist, the difficulty would be part of the game. Like your experience is going to be unique depending on how difficult it was for you to solve this or that puzzle or something like that. Mm. But usually it's just go here, press E, go there, press E, and then there's just a voiceover that, uh, you know, sobs about something. Usually. Do, do you have any walking sims in, in particular you're thinking about? I have played two, uh, but go ahead. Do you have any one in particular you're thinking about? So I think, yeah, the first one that I really... The first walking sim that I played that... It was before walking simulator was a term, I think. So the, it's called Dear Esther, if I remember correctly. And... When I saw the trailer and stuff, it was a lot of the content was about story and stuff. And at the time, there was no like characters or anything in the the trailers, so I didn't think about that because I've never, I had never played that walking sim before. So I thought, oh man, this is gonna be a great game. I love the story. This is gonna be amazing. Mm. And then when I played it, it's just pushing W. <laughs> and then you're staring at it through the level. And it's not like it's a 10-minute ten, ten thing. Like, two, three hours like in it, I'm thinking, like, where is the gameplay? I'm, mm. I'm waiting here for something to do. But I was thinking, you know, maybe it's an intersection. There's some story. And then, you know, it goes longer and longer. And you sort of have patience because you're longing for to have some story or something. But it just never comes. And uh, so that was the first, you know, when uh, <laughs> I really started getting disappointed with walking simulators, I guess. But it- another better example of it is, uh, what is it called? Uh, is it not Beginner's Guide? It's the Stanley Parable. Mm. Have you played that? No, it, it is so weird. The types of game we games we play seems to be, <laughs> uh, I, we we don't seem to play games the same games at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, uh, but that's uh, sort of what makes this uh, a fun duo, I think. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I think Garry's mod. Uh, no, not Garry's mod. Uh, what was it called? Not Beginner's Guide. It was called the Stanley Parable. Anyhow, so that's a walking simulator, I would say. Mm. But I would call that a game, more of a game than... Uh, so I guess, to answer the question, there is a, a spectrum. It's not a, a binary, mm. but rather, like, how much of a game is it? Uh, mm. If we're talking about video games, at least. And I think Stan, the Stanley Parable goes very high on that or this way depending on where you're looking Mm. uh, on that scale because so that works in the way that it's not just you go from a to b and then it's just a linear path there's always these lines that the narrator is gonna say and you know but rather it's super clever so in in my mind at least so the way it works is you go through an empty office and then the narrator says something about it. He narrates the main character. And then you come to a set of two doors and he says, and then Stanley, uh, the main character's name, walked through the door on the right. And you can do that. But you can also walk through the door on the left. Mm. And then after walking a couple of meters, he just teleports you back and says... Okay, let's try this again. He walked through the door on the left, and Mm. then you go to the right. And then you can sort of defy the narrator as you go, and he gets more and more pissed. Or there's one section with a broom closet where you can just go in there. There's nothing there, and you can just uh, stand there. uh, And the narrator sort of gets frustrated that you just won't move through the story. And then eventually you start over the level, and then he has uh, boarded up the, <laughs> the broom clas- closet. And there's, ah. like, tons of these, like, hidden... Uh, I mean, I thought it was going to be like, oh, this is going to be a fun 
thing that's going to take an hour to play. Mm. But I think I've played that for maybe 10 hours. Wow. And I'm still not sure I've gone through all of the paths. Because as you go, you ha- have all of these choices to go this door or th- that door. You could just jump off the path. And, you know, there's a lot of fun things. So I think the, the uniqueness, perhaps, is what makes it more of a game. That a movie, you could, like... By the frame, you could define exactly this is the movie. Exactly these frames, exactly this audio, whatever. This is the movie. Mm. But a game, it feels like it has to be different, at least for every person who plays it. That it, you know, it's uh, either difficulty or challenge or something mm. uh, has to be different with it, I guess. Mm. I'm just thinking like uh, for me to play those games where too many options that that's like a, a warning sign like my sort of OCD where I want to tick things off but it's funny because I'm making a game now which I really want you to just play it once and maybe put it away for a couple of years and come back and play it again and have a completely different yeah. experience because of all the choices and stuff. Uh, and even the way I design some, some quests and so on uh, at this point is that uh, they trigger based on stuff you've done. So, and I can imagine someone like me who wants to have everything sort of lists and stuff, like you have to do this to do this, da da da, that, that's gonna maybe drive them nuts. But hopefully a player won't even know that. So you just play it and then these side quests and so on are being tra- triggered naturally and you won't even know that you have missed 10 side quests. But you can't miss anything. The, the idea is that you should always be able to do everything. But anyway, my point is, it, uh, it sounds uh, it sounds like a game that will be quite challenging for me to play. But it sounds really cool though with this whole narrator thingy. I think there's uh, yeah. I'm not, I have played a game. Um, I love the theme music for for uh, Transistor. I mentioned that on this podcast before. I love listening to that that theme uh, that music, and they made. Uh, Hades, I think that has a narrator, but I, I can't remember now. Uh, but I've heard about a game with a narrator like the one you described. It's probably the one you talked about. Uh, but I was going to give a little bit of a um, walking sim experience from, from me. And that's uh, the, the two walking sims I played is Firewatch and Gone Home. So these two games are right. way more mainstream, I would say. Uh, I have... I maybe I I think they're quite mainstream because I heard about both of them from like uh, kind of funny uh, podcast and that's a little bit more mainstream podcast I was like, one of the you know bigger ones so uh, I was sort of recommended playing these games by listening to those podcasts and then uh, I played Firewatch so that was my first walking sim so I never played anything like that before and I wasn't quite sure what to expect and, but the way I played it, it was uh, I went to I was in Sweden during the summer and I went to our summer house in the middle of nowhere and I started playing this game and it is damn spooky. Uh, I don't know if it's intended to be a spooky game, but I was so scared sitting there playing this alone. And even though it's a walking sim, I think um, um, you know I said this many times when the first scene in Half Life. When you look in a direction, you may miss something. Or you, you yeah. see this uh, professor standing there. I'm actually playing Black Mesa, the one you recommended right now. Uh, but you can yeah. look to the left, and then he's standing there. But if you didn't look to the left, you didn't see him. Or there's these robots that walk through, and you're just sitting in this gondola going through this factory, right? And you can, you can miss everything if you look down to the floor. And I think these things are so cool. And that's my experience with Firewatch, that... Uh, at least I don't think it's scripted. It felt very natural that I was walking out of this. Uh... Have you ever played it or heard about it? Yeah, I've been wanting to play it, but I haven't. Okay, well, I won't spoil it. But anyway, I walk out from a place and I look up and then it was something there. And it felt extremely natural that I saw that because I looked up. Maybe it was uh, scripted and, and triggered by... The circumstances but it felt supernatural uh that i saw that because i did that and yeah it's a really i thought it was super spooky and then 
so I had a really good experience with that. Uh, so my first taste of walking sims were really good. And then I played Gone Home and I didn't like it at all, even though I think that's a little bit more popular game. Uh, it's a more popular game than Firewatch, maybe. Uh, but I do think... Uh, well, you know me a little bit nowadays, Odo, and I'm sort of into conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I think that's fun. So I think maybe that's why uh, Firewatch uh, felt more like a game for me than Gone Home. I can't. I can barely remember what Gone Home was about. And I also have a feeling that there was a lot of reading in Gone Home. Uh, and for me, yeah. when I play video games, sometimes I'm just in, not in a mood of reading anything. Uh, but yeah, and I. I think some of, uh, a lot of it is also voice acted in Gone Home, but there's also parts you have to read by yourself, if I remember correctly. Maybe it's not that that that's the case. Maybe that's not the case, but nonetheless, I did it did not click with me at all. And after that, that sort of turned me off on walking sims. And I actually tried one more, which I think is a walking sim, but I can barely remember what it what what the name is. Something with the uh, Elon Fitch, something along those lines. I think the premise is that you are totally alone in a in a village and everyone is gone. Um, the finding of Elon Fitch, uh, I feel it's a Chinese. Yes, developer. what remains of Edith Finch. Okay, there we go. So yeah. I started playing that one, but this was after Gone Home, and I just didn't feel like it. However, I would like to go back to that one and see if it would uh, work better this time around. Because that's the thing with games. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't click, and then you can go back, and it, it works just fine. But that's yeah. my experience with walking sims, and I guess I disagree in terms of I do think they are games, but I suppose then again it's all about that spectrum you mentioned. And also what I was thinking about as you were talking was these uh, um, graphic novels, which are huge here in Japan, and that's how I started making the Red Colony games, because I thought, man, I want to play these graphic novels that are all over Japan. But my Japanese is so bad, so I, I can't be bothered to, to play them and read everything. Uh, but those games are, you know, there's no gameplay whatsoever. It's just dialogues and then options and options yeah. and options. Um, so what are those? In that? I, I guess an interactive book, because you have options, right? Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, is it a game? I feel that's more like a stretch than than Walking Sims, because the... The graphic novels are literally just uh, text and pictures. Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, but I think also there's another layer to to games, I suppose, that there is the the spectrum of how much of a game they actually are, and then there is the spectrum of how they're perceived. I think. So, I think with Walking Sims, um, maybe they are games. Uh, uh, I'm not a hundred percent convinced, but I would say also that the perception. I've uh, played Gone Home as well, uh, actually, but the perception is sort of, to me at least. I haven't made this game, so I uh, take this with a grain of salt. I'm just some schmuck <laughs> sitting <laughs> on the internet, so uh, and my thoughts are not facts. But to me, it feels a little bit lazy to do like a walking sim with the exception of stand the parable i guess because to me it feels like you've done the story you've done the environment you've mm. done a lot of the functionality but you just forgot to like implement the final piece which is like the actual gameplay mm. so i don't know if you would uh depending on the story and context and and stuff what if if you would take Gone Home or something, and then you would maybe do something like you have a cat that you have to keep alive for the for the whole whole game, and then, you know, you have to get food for it, or you have to, uh, I don't know, empty the litter, I don't know, something. Hmm. Then you would just add a little bit of gameplay to that sort of distracts you from the story, so then you sort of have to keep both of those rolling at the same time to progress in the story while you have to do this gameplay part. And then you would have what I would say is like a fully-fledged game, so why not just do that? Because it feels like, to me, uh, it feels like 
especially when there's no it's a walking sim mm. uh, okay fine uh, there's only story uh, okay I guess fine uh, but then there's very little voice acting or it's not completely voice acted okay so you skipped out on the gameplay part mm. and then you skipped out on the voice acting so you just you know at this day and age you could just generate those with chat gpt like write a big ass novel mm. of like oh i'm so sad my dad died or you know mm-hmm. something uh to me you know um uh, feels like there's just some uh, and that might just be the perception of it but i, I feel like you could change that very easily mm. um but that's also something that uh with the what remains of edith finch I, if I do remember correctly, then I played that a little bit, and then I got to some section where you were a cat that, you know, walked outside the window of some room that you were trying to get inside, like some mist Mm. puzzle-esque. But that was also sort of an interesting mechanic, but it was like being on rails so you couldn't just run around and jump and climb wherever you wanted Mm. you have to you could just push w and then when you get to a ledge or something you click some button if i remember correctly and then you jump to the next ledge Mm. and so on and then i quit playing it because at one of these places i got stuck as being the cat because it wouldn't trigger to jump to the next whatever section to trigger the next dialogue Mm. so that also it feels like a walking simulator feels in so many aspects like a game light. Like you've scaled down the, the actual interactive part because perceptionally, at least, it feels like that's the hard part to get right. So mm. therefore, you just cut it out and then what you're left with is sort of like like the pitch for the game, but there's nothing, no content in there. It's just... Or you have the story, but not you don't play the story. You just listen to it. It could have been an audiobook or a mm. video instead. True. I was thinking now about these uh, graphic novels. Uh, the, the the sick part is that they they sell so well, and they're big teams making them, and they're beautiful. Uh, I mean, they're yeah. ten, usually quite hentai and and perverted, but nonetheless, <laughs> they are a very beautiful art. <laughs> And it is yeah. a shame. I was thinking now what you're talking about, it, it, they're being lazy. Um, and then I was thinking in this case with these graphic novels, I think that it's just greed. It must be like you make, you sell that many copies, you make that much money. Surely you could implement some gameplay and make it even better. But why would you? Because they keep selling. And obviously there's an audience for it who used, I guess, just want these uh, interactive books, if you will. And yeah, and because it makes no sense, like you can go to like a game shop here in Tokyo and they sell these to the PlayStation Vita, even there's loads of them. So, surely there is a right. I mean, wouldn't it be easier to just put them on the smartphone? I guess maybe they are on smartphones as well, but then you make less money on the smartphone, maybe. Uh, so you, yeah, uh, fuck, I don't know, but I feel like there, there must be some sort of a greed behind it uh, as well. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, Walking, uh, Gone Home and Firewatch and all those games, because I mean those are quite bombastic games in terms of development and the way they look and so on, uh, if all assets are made by the team and not asset flips. At least yeah. in uh, Firewatch it looks very unique. But nonetheless, when I think about these um, uh, graphic novels, uh, I would love to see gameplay in those novels i mean not to toot my own horn but that's why i did red colony i was hoping someone would tag along and copy me and make those types of games but nothing yeah. yet so uh, but it would be cool well yeah exactly well i guess i haven't played that many visual novels i think i played one or two but it feels like at least I don't know, this is just my perception, but I feel, to me at least, visual novels feel at least sort of honest with what they are. Mm. Walking Sims feels like you're trying to like tag along and get the audience of 3D games where you can go in three dimension. 
dimensions, but you won't like commit to doing what these amazing games do, which is have the gameplay part in it. But visual novels, at least, they're very honest with, okay, this is just a text adventure. It's basically a book with different endings. Hmm. True. Uh, um, I was th- When I played uh, yeah. What Remains of e- Elon Musk, what did you say? Elon F- Fitz? Elon- <laughs> Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> what Remains no, of Elon did. Musk. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. But, well, was it Elon Fitch? El- Elon? <laughs> Edith Finch. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. What well, remains of him? When I played that, I was thinking, her. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have played a game, but I played it for okay. a very few minutes. But I was sure. uh, when I saw the trailer, I remember, wow, this looks like some sort of Fallout game. This looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I, what you talked about before, it sort of feels like you're tricking people into believing it is a game, but it's it really yeah. isn't. And I was quite disappointed with that because I thought it was going to be like a um, some sort of Fallout type of situation, and yeah, and the game looks beautiful. And uh, yeah, maybe you're right there. Like it, it, if they spent time making it, turning it to an actual game, I think that would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, and I think have an it... interesting story and everything. Just no yeah. gameplay. Well, I think at least. You know, it feels at least to me it's easy to say this now sitting here like a schmuck and, you know, not making the game myself, of course, but it feels to me like you could add something, like add a, I don't know, a duck family that you have to take care of or, or something, and then in the end you get to choose if they live or die or, you mm. know, something. I mean, at least if you take, uh, what was this game called? Uh, was this game about uh, like the bat- butterfly effect uh, where have a rain? No, uh, but yes, that also sort of works. But it was this game. Let me quickly check here. Until dawn, or I bet you're gonna say yeah. some really obscure, weird game that. I have never uh, heard of that. No, I think it's sort of known. God damn it. Oh, here it is. Uh, Life is Strange. Have you played that? Uh, I heard about it. Let me... I'm going to look too. Anyway, what about it? So basically, what you do is you play... Have you seen the movie The Butterfly Effect? Uh, yeah, ages ago. Is that with the... Yeah. Uh, that Best 17 picture, show I think. guy. Okay. Yeah. So, basically, the premise of the movie and the, the game is basically you have this... You start at some point in the game, and then you can actually sort of... Uh, things happen in the story, and then you can go back and change... I think you can go back maybe 30 seconds or something and then you can change some action of the scene you're currently in mm. to say that you, you know, walk on a banana peel and you slip and die. And then you, you know, reverse 30 seconds and then you, you know, throw it in the paper basket or something. Mm. Uh, something like that, but more serious stuff. Uh, anyhow, that at least, I would almost classify it as a walking scene because you can walk around and you can talk to people and then you know make choices and that's the game Mm. but that i think absolutely commits to making good gameplay whether you like the game or not so you have this whole turning back time thing Mm. and then you have a lot of like choices like how you want to interact with characters do i want to be angry at this guy yeah also Comparing to walking simulators, mm. there are actual characters in this game. You have a main character, and you have a lot of NPCs that you can talk to, and you have a lot of uh, you know characters and development, and it says something about society, and you know a lot of these things. And then in the end, you can choose either this or that, and then you sort of get to decide how the game ends. Mm. And you know that's something I think that. It feels so weird that walking simulators 
don't have it. They have focused so much on story, but they don't have characters almost. You know, mm. you have like audio tapes scattered around <laughs> the the building, but it's it's basically like doing what we're doing now. We're just recording something that we say, put it in the game, mm. press E to play, and that's it. It's an MP3 player almost. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but Life is Strange, I looked at some pictures of, of the game while you were talking. Yeah. Uh, you said you played the first one. Uh, I haven't played the first oh, okay. one, but I have... I don't know if you could count it, but there is this one guy I follow on YouTube who teaches Japanese. So he played it dubbed in Japanese, okay. and then he translated and explained the grammar as you played it. Oh, I see. Uh, so I've seen the gameplay... Uh, through that perspective, so I sort of have an idea of what it's like to play mm. it, I guess. But uh, did I misunderstand you? But you thought that Life is Strange is not like a game, or uh, you said uh, you don't care about the characters. Like, no, no, no I I complimented. I would say that. Like the bad version ah. would be like doing Gone Home. It's ah, just a bunch of MP3 files, and then the the good, the best version of a walking ah, simulator would be Life is Strange. Yeah, because I was thinking that like that sounds like the best version too. Because uh, if you can turn back time, as you said, if you die in the yeah. game, and you obviously you, you wouldn't care to turn back time if you don't care about the characters. But if they caught your attention and you care about the characters, you would want to turn back time to make it right to make sure they yeah. survive huh, interesting yeah yeah well i think yeah i think you're right but it also reminded me i was watching uh, it's called beer grills or something i think it's australian or british guy who's in the forest uh, surviving yes the guy drinking urine <laughs> yeah so uh, i was watching an episode with my son and it's an interactable netflix show oh i've yes i play that too sure. yeah so uh, it kind of sounds like that, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. For, yeah. for me, it's uh, doing that on Netflix. Man, I do not like those interactable films, except the one uh, that was kind of like the Black Mirror stuff. Uh, I think they made one uh, one episode because my yeah. wife and I were very much invested in that the Black Mirror show. But when I watched this with my son, I I felt like uh, it was sort of uh, uh, interrupting. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of suck at watching movies, I guess. When I actually sit down and watch them, I get so sucked in that it just felt like I was interrupted by having these choices. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of stressed out, too. Yeah. But with an interactable game, I mean, with a walking sim, you are in charge all the time, so it would it makes more sense, I think, to have these uh, like in Life is Strange, if you can turn back time and all that stuff. But yeah. when I watched it on Netflix, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, but... Yeah. I would actually say uh, the opposite. Mm. I would, I fucking loved it. Oh. Uh, you know, I I think that sort of uh, gets me to a, a sort of a conclusion about uh, what is a game. And I think if you have the start and then you have the finish, and then the more like individual choices you have, the more I would consider it to be a game. Mm. And you know, uh, say like Gone Home. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, <laughs> how how big it is. I've seen, I've played it a little bit, but I really got sick of it. But you know, uh, from that you have like uh, opening the front door, and then you have like opening this door and opening that door, and then eventually you listen to the final MP3 file, and then the game over. Uh, but if you compare. Maybe it takes an hour before you can make an, a meaningful choice in that game. But mm. I feel that at least those Bear Grylls, like DVD menu esque games, mm. at least then you have like a here is the start, you have a clear objective, and then you, you know, get to choose which one, which video you get to see, I guess. But mm. uh, I mean, in the story of the, the episode, at least it's, you know, win or lose. Mm. feels a lot more clear and a lot of the choice density is a lot thicker than it is with for example gone home in my experience Mm. at least and the same with for example uh, life is strange or you know uh, you get to 
I mean, th- uh, the more linear it is, the more it is like a, a video or something like that. And I think that's what makes it less of a game for mm. me. Yeah, I think maybe you you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, maybe that's what <laughs> makes a game a game. If there is no options there, that takes the gamey stuff away from it. Because then, but in that uh, regard, I guess uh, uh, graphic novels are more like games than uh, Gone Home, or yeah, Gone Home. Yeah, I think in my opinion, I, I mean, in visual novels, I guess you have the. I don't know. I haven't played the that much but at least if you have choices about which boy to date or you know mm. whatever it is yeah the objective uh, is usually to get laid so yeah exactly <laughs> uh, but you know at least there it feels like that's also something with walking simulator this becomes like a shit on walking simulators <laughs> episode apparently but you know it uh, feels like a little bit like that's also something that walking simulators just don't haven't bothered to do like set up a a clear objective mm. because usually it's just oh you tell this story and blah 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 and my dog gets sick and blah blah, blah. but there's no like your mission is this mm. i mean it doesn't matter if you really did do this or that but it wouldn't it be nice if you at least you know affected something in the lore of the game mm. like your i don't know dog is sick or you uh, have to fix your house or whatever it is and then you know at the end of it you have changed this or you have in gone home i think nothing changes in the lore you have just like understood what happened to your sister i think mm. uh, who ran away from home so you haven't even changed anything you could just read a synopsis and that would be the same as the game almost. Mm. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Fuck walking sims. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, true. I mean, yeah, I never thought about I mean, like we said on top of the episode, I never really thought about any of this except uh, we, so one of us had written it down in a document back in the day. So, yeah, but I I do like uh, I I like to come to some sort of conclusion, and then that we don't do this, you know, you nuance things into oblivion and walk away from it without coming to a final answer. So I I like to, um, as I call when the judge have a hammer and hit the table and club it in. So <laughs> club in the definition yeah. of, of a game is when you have options. So a walking sim is not a game. You're out. I think. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Or, you know, it has to have... Having the main, like, gameplay... I think the mechanic itself isn't necessarily the the determining factor. You know, walking could be a meaningful thing that gives options. For example, Stanley Parable. I don't know how many choices you have in that, but wouldn't surprise me if it would be, like, two, three hundred at least mm. uh, throughout the game. Um, I think uh, if I find it, I'm gonna find a chart of uh, all the choices you can make in Stanley Parable and display it here on screen. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think it's. I really tried to find all of the endings, but I think it's it's like so many things you can do and the things that you know this affect this, and then you're up this branch, and then you sort of. Uh, have to restart the whole game to go this other branch. It's really, really fascinating. Mm. So I think the gameplay mechanic walking isn't necessarily the the problem, I guess. Mm. And uh, the same with like visual novels, so, like reading and clicking is the main gameplay mechanic. But you could also make a a visual novel that would just be a novel, and then you just click next page, mm-hmm. and that would also fall not in the category of a game Mm. to me so i think as you say options probably is something that you know is what determines is it a game or is it not Mm. Uh, yeah feels like yeah i think that's sort of what frustrates me about walking simulators this whole it feels dishonest in a way that you 
sort of you want to latch on to the label of it being a game, but then at the same time you just fail to do the basic thing that makes it a game. It's like if you would do a movie and then there are no... I guess there there is actually... I've heard about this documentary that does sort of this. Uh, so I don't know what the hell I would categorize that as. But it's... I think it's called Samsara or something like that. It's a documentary that has no voiceover. Mm. So it's just a series of like... I think it's something like where they film a uh, iPhone factory and then they film something else and you know you the feeling you get for from seeing all of these poor people being uh, locked into a iPhone factory you're working 16 hours a day mm. is sort of what tells the story I guess but it feels a little bit like that that you want to make a movie but you don't have any characters mm. you don't have any lines you don't have any twist endings mm. you know it's just surveillance footage uh. almost <laughs> mm. so ka but the, yeah it, so the ex- but yeah that that's another thing though cuz the experience in you know, of itself could you but i suppose it's different you know when you hear people playing for example well Soulsborne games and so on. The yeah. the experience is the whole. Like everyone's yeah. experience is different because they go to different places and so on. Even though there is no story and well, there is story, but uh, yeah. I want, yeah. I, I don't know what to, uh, what else to <laughs> say. Yeah. Um, what else? Um... But I guess, you know, for myself, if I would want to make a game, I think it it would be so interesting to talk to somebody who makes walking simulators Mm. to know what they're thinking. To me, it feels a little bit like... To me, it feels so... (laughs) in, In the worst sense of the word, artsy. Like... Yeah, it's like uh, modern art. Exactly that's the, uh. the issue with Walker Simulator for me. It's the same thing with, like, you know, you have these classical pieces, like take the Sistine Chapel or whatever it's called in the, in the Vatican. You have mm. this masterpiece that, you know, sort of captures the human form and, you know, this... Uh, uh, is it the David statue that uh, Michelangelo cut out of the marble? It, like, you can see... From some of these marble statues, you can see like it looks like actual fabric, but mm. cut out of like solid marble. Mm. Uh, and then you have these uh, Jackson Pollock shit, uh, where you have like you just throw a bucket of uh, paint on the canvas and then sell it mm. for forty billion dollars or something. Mm. It's like you want to do art, but you just fail to do the actual thing that art does, which is, like, communicate an idea of something. Mm. It says something about, like, you know, either depict the human condition or something, or, you know, tells a story, or, you know, we used to have paintings of battlefields that are so accurate that we use it as a historical reference. Mm. And then you have this, like, it's a white canvas and it's a black line somewhere across it. Mm sells for 10 million or something. Mm. It's like you fail to do the actual thing that is the art form. Mm. Uh, what you all want to aspire to. Mm. You want to aspire to make the highest art possible. Mm. And sure, everybody can't do it. I certainly can't. Mm. But so with fun. Walking Simulator, it feels uh, the same. Like you, you have this... You know, you want to... Latch on to, uh, to the, the art that is games, but you fail to do the game part. And that's mm. fine. It's fine if you want to do that, but it's called a video, not uh, a game. So, so what you're saying is that Walking Sims are the game, wor- the game industry's version of pretentious artists who claim that anything <laughs> can be art, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's... You know, that's why it would be so interesting to talk to somebody who makes walking simulators mm. and are passionate about it. 
because I could be totally wrong mm. and there is a lot of depth and stuff there mm. that I'm not seeing uh, because that's again part of the the perception spectrum I guess mm. uh, so that would be interesting to see what do they why do they call it a game and why do you know what what's the deal with it well why why is this something you want to create and why don't you want to add more stuff is it like mm. you lack the time or you know, is it because you can't, or is it because you? It's an active choice not to include the stuff that I would consider makes it more of a game. Mm, interesting. I, uh, I, I we, before we started recording, I told I just mentioned to you that I have sort of tapped out a little bit from the gaming industry right now because of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And when there's a game that I'm super excited about, I go offline like more than usual. <laughs> uh, so. I I feel like a couple of years ago when the walking so this is just a feeling right it's no fact yeah here. so I feel like walking sims were a hot topic let's say four or five years ago and yeah. that yeah maybe they are a bit pretentious and a little bit artsy partsy and uh, yeah but I wonder if are they still being made? Like, I wonder if maybe it came and went, that whole thing. And maybe that's a sign in some way that it's not games and it's it, it didn't survive in this uh, gaming landscape. Sort of what we meant, I mentioned in some episode many times ago when I said truth will always sort of find a way or whatever yeah. is real or the truth, that's going to survive. And... Uh, walking sims didn't survive yeah. but hey i don't know maybe there are still a lot yeah. of walking sims coming out but my feeling is that uh, it, it was like a uh it, it came and went and it was very artsy yeah. partsy and uh, it served a purpose for a short period of time it was something new and something interesting something that never been done before for sure so kudos to that yeah but maybe it's in the grand scheme of things they were not meant to survive in the industry and then we will find out yeah. soon that it's like hundreds of them coming out every day. So then I'm wrong. But, <laughs> but my feeling is that uh, they came and went. But yeah. if there is someone it, who makes yeah. them, that yeah, I think that would be a very interesting. Uh, those would be interesting questions to ask, especially like if when we think about this, uh, the remaining of Fitch and uh, Gone Home, Elon for Musk. example. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like those games are so beautiful and they're so like yeah borderline yes. triple a so there's just yeah. like why not why not just yeah add that last piece yeah exactly that sort of i agree that adds to the the frustration that you know they've done something so good and that goes for gone home too it's a beautiful game it's amazing graphics it's amazing audio it's amazing you know performance all of it mm. but it's like just a little bit, you know, I just thought of something that, you know, in real life we have a walking simulator that managed to turn itself into an actual game. It's called golf. At least there you <laughs> walk from hole to hole. Yeah. It's just the goal is from 1 to 18, but mm. then at least you have, you know, get the ball in the hole. Mm -hmm. If you would add, <laughs> if you would mod Gone Home and just do a putting green before you can proceed to the next MPT <laughs> file, that would make it a game. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking, if you would just <laughs> mod the game and add a shotgun and some fucking zombies, <laughs> but that would yes. obviously, well, that would probably ruin the game. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they're trying to tell a story mm. there. Um, I can't remember what the game was about because I, I didn't finish it, but Something tells me that uh, zombies would is not what they needed in that game. <laughs> uh. I vote for a putting green. So if anyone makes that mod, I will happily review it on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or in Gone Home, maybe just have like... Uh, well, then, oh, that would be options. And that, that would classify itself as a game, according to you. Like, it's, it's, imagine you're walking around in this house and you have a... a Dart board, and you can throw dart for whatever reason, and yeah, pick up some trash, yeah, exactly. clean up a room, maybe. Maybe you walk into a room, and she says, "Ah, oh, my mom left a letter here somewhere, but I can't remember where I put it." And then you have to clean up the room. That would add. Yeah, some it could gameplay. be something like that. Exactly, it could you know tie into the lore. I mean, even that uh, is it called on. Unp 
Unpacked. Uh, let's see here. It was uh, a game about unpacking. Uh, like you're moving and then you unpacking yeah mm. obviously it's called unpacking but anyhow it's about unpacking so you have moved to a new place mm. and the goal of the game as i understand i haven't played it mm. but i would love to mm. is that you unpack the boxes the moving boxes mm. put the shoes in the shoe rack put the toothbrush in the you know bathroom and mm. so on and then that sort of tells a story but then at least there's a game gameplay element there that so we have to find where everything goes and mm. sure it sounds easy you're gonna put the the clothes on the clothes rack mm. but uh, there's all sorts of uh, fun uh, story elements apparently that mm. you have in there and there's also a bit of a cultural element to it so for example some people bring shoes into the house and mm. some people leave them in the hallway you know some people have the washing machine in the kitchen some don't have them in the bathroom uh, hmm. So there's apparently, I heard there's a lot of stuff that they didn't expect that were, were issues because some players from different parts of the world didn't understand how to complete this level mm. because putting this mm, thing here mm. doesn't make sense in their country, for example. Mm. So that's and, super interesting, I think. And the purpose is to f figure out who you are? Is that the sort of goal? No, I think it's also sort of this, you know, you don't... That's also, I would classify this as a game just because of that element fit the right thing. It's like basically like this, uh, <laughs> I'll show some stock footage in the background, but imagine yeah, you're this kid and you want to put the square thing in the square hole, the star thing in mm. the star shape. Uh, it's basically that, but for, uh, you know, don't put the, I think you can put a toaster in the bathtub and there's some funny moment I saw mm. from the trailers. That's kind of funny, but, you know, put the right thing where it's supposed to be, but then you don't change the story. Um, so uh, it's rather that you experience, well, you know, I think it's something like, oh, all of a sudden, next place you move to, maybe uh, there's no dad's things mm. anymore or something. But I think then the difficulty of the game makes the story that it's going to be different for everyone because... Uh, mm. This person figured out immediately where all of the hair things were, and mm. maybe if you're a guy, then you don't get that or something, whatever it is. Huh. I was thinking as you were talking about it that it sounds like, well, I was expecting that it's just one house you're moving into and you don't know who you are, and then the last thing you do is to put up a mirror and sort of you can see oh yourself. Oh my god, that would be fucking amazing. Yeah. But then I got annoyed about my own idea because then I thought, well, it's probably going to be some bullshit woke shit. And then I was thinking, that would be cool, though, if it was like, uh, I mean, it, when you see yourself, you're some, I don't know, redneck trucker guy, and then the shit you have put up in the house <laughs> make no sense to who you are, yeah. but that could be the, a big twist and so on. And then I sort of liked the idea again, but... Uh, Ah, that, that yeah. it sounds interesting. Though. Man, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna keep that in my head for something maybe. <laughs> you know, that would be amazing. You, you know, you could do uh, like everything from like you are the monster thing, mm. uh, where you you know see a bunch of I don't know broken this or that, and then uh, eventually oh shit it's you. Mm. Or uh, or maybe you could do something like oh shit you're in prison <laughs> or something. Maybe you can Kojima the whole thing and hack into the user's webcam. So when you see yourself in the mirror, it turns on the webcam and you just see yourself. Ooh. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. You are the most. Yeah, a lot of things you could do with that, I mm. think. But that's the thing with games, with fucking working simulators, that there is so many, as we said earlier, that's part of what's so frustrating, that these are in all honesty, so talented people. Mm. Like, I couldn't make Gone Home, to be completely honest. I couldn't make the 3D things, I couldn't make the, uh, you know, all of the audio probably. There's a lot of things that are just amazing. Mm. So, why not just go a little further and mm. then just satisfy everybody? Mm. Or it doesn't have to be your kind of game, but at least it could be a game. You mm. could do... Oh, you're so close mm, to uh, mm. something real. Mm. I mean, not joking. You could do a dartboard or a fucking putting green and it would be like a real game. Mm. Or maybe you have to have this amount of score on the dartboard to be able to progress or something. Yeah. <sighs> 
<laughs> yeah. It annoys me so much. Yeah. Oh, uh, you could uh, like I like. <laughs> I feel like we're pissing on Gone Home all the time, and I, none of us have actually played it, which makes no sense. <laughs> I was just thinking, maybe there's a cat in the house, and uh, I, I remember the house you know, was I... empty, so maybe you had to feed the cat, and then you look through the fridge, and all the food is old, and then that's to the lore that, whoa, now you know the house has been empty for a long time, and yeah. you look at the date, and then you can look at the calendar on the wall, and you see that uh, it just crosses until the May 25th, and now it's yeah. May 29. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah. So that. Yeah. There was. There, there's a lot of things you could have added to make it turn it into a game. But according yeah. to the House of Games, <laughs> what is a game uh, chart? Gone Home is not a game. Not a game. <laughs> so on that note, go home. Go home. Uh, <laughs> that was supposed to be a segue to find uh, wrapping up the episode. Unless you have something to say. Yes. Um, yeah, I would say disclaimer. If the the author of Gone Home listens to this, I don't hate you. You made an amazing <laughs> game, but you could uh, just put in a put putting green or something. Um, full disclosure: I did see a speed run of it once uh, after trying to play it. Uh, so I tried to play it, and then I just got frustrated that it you know got nowhere. To mm. is what I felt like. Felt like nothing happened. And then I watched a playthrough. And I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending felt so fucking disappointing that I felt like, oh, thank fuck that I didn't complete this game. <laughs> this ending, oh my god. Hmm. Like, make a game. Uh. But again, uh, I don't hate the guy or gal who made uh, Gone Home. It's uh, well done. I just feel like there's potential there hmm. that you could make something amazing. Hmm. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think that that, that will do it. So, uh, leave a voicemail if you have opinions about walking simulators. Uh, yeah, I, I should mention also uh, something that uh, we did mention yesterday during the episode that got uh, deleted uh, and butchered to hell. That we actually got a comment, so I'm gonna just read that again. Yeah, just so one thing, Odo, this... before we continue. Yeah. We can't even yeah. make a fucking podcast episode. <laughs> Compare that to well, the at... guys who made Gone yeah. Home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least I would say we're honest with this is linear. We can't, there's no. <laughs> this is not ending. a game. If you're listening to this, no, and you exactly. Think this, is a game? this is just. <laughs> Like, imagine, like, we say, like, oh, this is a podcast about game development, and then there's just. The recorded audio of a graphic card fan going for an hour, <laughs> mm. who is like, "Oh, this is some like uh, blah blah." You know, at least we're yeah. honest. This is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, honesty, I guess, mm. is uh, the point. Don't market yourself as a game if it's just linear. Mm. That's what I wanna put out there. Yeah, uh, but anyhow, we got a comment. Uh, a nice comment. Haha, take that gun home. <laughs> 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 okay, anyhow. Sorry, gun home. It's a great game. I love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Villageman76. Uh, he spells his name kind of interesting. I'll display it on here above my, me. Uh, but it says, awesome video. For episode 65, which was the last episode. Awesome video. I'm a game designer and like this content on Rumble. Keep up the great work. So, uh, you know, that's at least we're doing the right thing. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> thank you for the comment, mm. Village Man. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Much appreciated. And uh, please, if uh, if we're doing the same shit that uh, Gun Home is doing, please tell us so we can uh, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyhow, uh, don't uh, don't uh, troll on uh, the creators of Gone Home. They're probably nice people and deserve love and uh, affection. So, uh, yeah, if the the creators want to come on this show and explain uh, explain themselves, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> if if they wanna, you know, explain why they did the game. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't burn the bridge down. <laughs> There's still a small chance they might come on the show and, and explain what a walking sim is and why they do it. <laughs> but seriously, I do want to hear what yeah. the game is about. Uh, so uh, please, <laughs> come on the show. Uh, I think there's no chance that they're coming on, but they're most welcome to. Mm. I would love to hear it from their perspective, as I said. Oh my god. Whew, I think uh, in in hindsight, I think this was actually a better episode than with the one we did yesterday. <laughs> so uh, happy about that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, send in a voicemail if you have any opinions. Um, what else? Leave a comment. Um, love to hear what you feel about this episode. Is it just uh, a bunch of bullshit, or <laughs> did you actually gain anything from listening to this? Would love to hear it. Mm. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, Rune, for being my amazing host as always. Uh, thank you for uh, gone home for making a game. I still appreciate it. Mm. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next week. Have a good one. Sayonara!